Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over uh, making web page layouts with headers and footers. And we'll start off pretty simple, and we'll add a little bit more complexity to it. So I've already got a page set up here. This is a blank HTML5 doc. Got the doc type definition, HTML with language attribute, um, head section with character encoding meta tag, and I've got a title for my page. And the body of the page is blank. I think I'm going to do an external style sheet with this one, which I haven't created yet. So I'll go ahead and use a link tag. And I'll just go ahead and call this layout1.css since that's the name of my uh, HTML file also. So I do need to make the CSS file, so I'll just jump over here and uh, create ourselves. Get this saved, and this is called layout1.css. Confuse myself here. I got layouts one.html with an s and layout one.css with no s all right but i think i'm good to go so i've got this page set up blank page and when you're starting to do anything more than the simplest pages you definitely want to start using a wrapper okay so within the body of my page i'm going to enclose everything within id equals wrapper or container both are pretty common um, id names and I'll go ahead and start that right after my opening body tag and go ahead and finish that right after my closing body tag. And of course, the simplest layout, uh, we can use the new HTML5 elements. There's the header tag. Don't confuse the header tag with the head tag. Seems a little confusing, but of course, the set of head tags denotes the head section of the actual document, which contains our metadata and web page title and stuff like that. The header tag denotes it's a it's a it's a block element for layout and basically this would be the header of our um, of our website and let me see if I just can't find you a really quick example let me just jump over here I'm using Chrome here and I'll jump over to Apple's website so if I'm looking over at Apple's website their navigation bar could easily be described as being the header of their page and if we go to any of their interior pages Here's a, here's a good example of a header section. And the header section includes their navigation, and it includes the secondary navigation to the very, you know, so we got primary navigation, secondary navigation to the various products. Then, of course, we have this main section here, which we can just call the main section. And then, of course, we've got, um, and who knows where the main section might end. But at some point, definitely you might consider this the footer area. So even though they are using a lot of little smaller parts, I think Apple's website is a really good example of a simple web page layout that uses a header and a footer. Okay, And we'll even call it a one-column layout, even though you could argue, hey, it looks like it's three columns right there. Well, yeah, they've got three little uh, articles right there. But overall, it's got the look of a one-column web page layout with header and footer. Really big footer section, a lot of stuff in there. So that's kind of what I, what I want to go for. And I uh, can't remember if I'm, I have to reopen my other page. So, But let's jump over back over to the HTML real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and create a header. And I'll just put in this is the header. Now we don't, uh, of course, there's also a footer tag too, by the way. So I can do, this is the footer. There we go. And then we just need that main section. Now, what do you want to use for that main section? You know, I'm just going to go ahead and use a div here. And I'll just call it main. The main content area. Now, I'm not actually using a section tag. And you might argue with me on this, and you might even be right, because yeah, this is a, a key section of the page. However, I'm going to encourage you to use a section tag if the section seems to have its own name. If you could name it and you could actually put a headline for it, then I think the section tag is more appropriate. But it's not like you're literally going to have a headline that says main content area. You're really just making a, a, an area of the page. It's a logical division, which is what the div tag actually stands for. So there's going to be a part of this web page, which is my main content area. Now, within, within my main content area, I might have a section just for advertisements. I might have a section just for um, um, 
maybe product specials or something like that. And I might have those sections because then I can clearly imagine a name form, a headline form. So I'm going to use a div and I think that's probably the better way to go here. But otherwise my HTML is complete. I've got these three main parts. I've got a header, a main content area, and a footer. And the HTML has them arranged in the same order I want to see them on the page. So how does this look? Let's go ahead and find out. So let me jump back over to Chrome. Paste. There we go. So this is what I've got so far. I need some styles to really see this in action. So let's back over to the editor. But I'm going to jump over to my CSS file. And by now, everybody should be doing a reset rule. I do a very simple reset rule. So this is probably the most simple reset rule you'll see. Often you won't see this unit of measurement. Or if you're using zeros as a unit of measurement, you don't literally need to put in the pixels or the inches. It just means zero for everything, zero, zero. Um, I often put PX in there, but it's not necessary. And then, I, of course, I've got my, uh, um, I do have my container. Now, when you're referring to an element that has an ID, you can do that in a couple ways. You can write it just the way I did here, pound sign container refers to, of course, my element with ID container. I could also do this. It's no, not better, not worse. I mean, this does remind me, though, that my ID container is a div element. So just another way to go. And for this one, I'm not going to do anything to it yet. I want to show you that a little bit later on. But then I've got these other elements. I've got my header. And I'll just go ahead and put in some background colors here so we can really see them. Background color red. And I'm going to put a little height on here, about 80 pixels. That's good. Then I've got my uh, main content area. I'll do background color yellow. And you let me scroll up so you can see all that. I'm not going to, yeah, yeah, I'll put a height on there too. Height um, 300 pixels. And then, of course, we have our footer. Do a color code there. Just, that's color code for green. And um, let me put a height on that also. Now, I'm putting heights on here not because I think it's necessarily an important thing to do. Uh, for instance, I don't even like the idea of putting a height on the main area, but because I don't have any content on my page, I wanted it to have a more realistic look. So let me just jump back over to Chrome and refresh so you can see how that's looking. And so now we've got ourselves a, uh, a flag from Ghana. But uh, otherwise, we've got ourselves a layout that is one column with a header, main content area, and a footer. Now, normally I like the uh, the content to dictate the height. So if you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff in the header, I want that height to stretch. So using oops, wrong screen. So using the height property really isn't the best thing to do in real life. If you wanted to set a minimum height, though, I am a big fan of min height. So you could do something like min height, and what this would do, this would we won't see any difference on our web page layout but if you started to add a whole bunch of content to one of these areas it would stretch in height so that way it could accommodate all the stuff you're putting in there so I think really that's the better way to go is maybe some min height and just so you can see since I've got my container I can do something like um, width 80 percent margin I'll do um, 10 pixels top and bottom auto margins left and right and now I can make myself kind of a centered content area and this will resize if my browser resizes so will my main content area so this is a flexible width layout or a variable width layout if you're doing a fixed width layout which is super common then of course you could just set that and I could set this for 990 px 990 pixels and that of course would accommodate uh, 1024 resolutions and bigger quite easily if somebody went to my fixed width layout with a smaller web browser they're gonna get a little horizontal scroll action you always want to avoid the horizontal scroll at a reasonable web size so if you're getting a horizontal scroll at a 1024 resolution then you gotta take the time to fix that you don't want that
Um, if you're getting a horizontal scroll at an 800 wide resolution, well, then it's debatable and say, look, I mean, very few people actually have an 800 uh, wide resolution. That gets us into a different topic of um, uh, dynamic web page layouts. Okay, so and we'll, uh, I think I've already got some videos on that for. Um, so if you want to have your web page load up, let's say in an iPhone or an iPod or a handheld device, Android phone, you have to resize all that stuff. But anyway, so there's our basic layout with a header and footer. I'm going to mix this up a little bit in another video.